Alrighty guys, as the bring you another Dragon Ball Legends T.O.P. video. So this is going to be for T.O.P. Season 8, I is, I, I do believe, right? Um, but anyways, we're going to go and be hopping in for a different kind of guide video. This is going to be a definitive guide, so I'm going to have timestamps in the description below. That way you can get to where you need to be. And the first thing that we're going to be going over is your top teams. So usually what I like to do at the start of season is I like to just go ahead and go into the leaderboard. And pretty much what you see here is what is generally going to be some of the better teams usually this will change over the course of time like last season in case you guys didn't know i was using the El pool force and i actually did die with them like around after the second boss and i still was able to achieve the rank of like 1300 and something which is still pretty good right especially if you're trying to just watching these guys just to solely get into the top 6k if you're just trying to get into z league and stuff like that then this is the video for you so the first team obviously it has to be androids i think this is the team i'm going to personally going to be running and you know, it's easy, it's very easy to go ahead and look at these teams and tell you guys the general strategy of these teams so again like um android 18 this red one right here she actually heals the team and the diagonals right so she's going to in this position that this player has right here the number one player uh, the red 18 is going to be healing the blue 18 and she's going to be healing the super 17 zenkai right and then i really like the 16 a lot because the 16 can go ahead and perform a cover rescue no matter what the hp is no matter what the hp is so i usually have the android 16 in a position where he can go ahead and cover rescue the red 18 instead of one of these guys right because he also covers the diagonals behind him so right here he would technically be able to do a cover change for either the blue 18 or for the super 17 so i usually like to have him in one of these boxes right here that way he can go ahead and cover her right here now another team that i'm seeing a lot is gt so you can see this setup right here um, a lot of these units again too just to go ahead and clarify the reason why these units are doing good is because you have a lot of tier one units in here right like this guy for example he has gt and obviously the main focus of gt this is a rank 23 player by the way he's rank 23 he's using gt your main like star your all-star on this team is going to be baby right here because again he is your healer so generally when you're making teams and you have a healer you're almost pretty much good to go at that point right a healer is probably like one of the most prioritized things in the top with there are some exceptions that we will go ahead and talk about later but this baby he's able to heal to the left and to the right of him so he's going to be healing the super saiyan 3 kid goku and the zenkai gt kid goku as well and then this majub he's pretty good right um uh, uh, this ex goku up here this ex the extreme one he actually is an hp buffer and hp is also incredibly important in top this 17 this guy doesn't even have him zenkai right so that speaks volumes in itself he doesn't even have him zenkai and he's still able to perform up here because he still has the ability where he can eat blast cards he can eat blue cards if need be if he does get hit by one which is kind of rare in this game mode depending on what character you're going against but point is is that he is unzenkai and this guy is still racking in the points fairly easily keep in mind though that he does have a good amount of stars across all of these units he has a 14 star ex kid goku he has a seven star um super saiyan 3 kid goku and a eight star oob as well as the the shadow dragons right there on the backup right at high stars all right so next we have regen so this is a team that i'm really 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 well versed on because this is kind of like this is like the easiest team that you can bring into T.O.P. across all seasons. These This team never fails to make one of these videos. And again, we just talked about Baby. He's going to be healing to the left and to the right of you every single turn. Every single turn. And then this Bootanks, he gets a blue card at the start of every single fight. Like literally at the very, very beginning. So he's really good for sniping um, red units, right? Uh, very, very easily off the start. Yeah, another fan favorite of regeneration is this Ella Piccolo right here because he gets a blue card at the start of the third turn after transforming and stuff like that. Again, really, really good. And then, of course, Bootanks and him pair extremely well off each other because he protects him in terms of color, right? Bootanks protects um, the Ella Piccolo by sniping the reds, and that therefore there will be no reds to go ahead and do a lot of damage to your Ella Piccolo. The Ella Piccolo also heals himself, which is very important. And then also, uh, I like to note that this this cell right here is pretty good for this game mode as well. He can heal himself. He like does his green card, and upon activating the green card, he is going to be able to heal himself. He provides a, a hefty amount of debuffs on the enemy team as well. Kid Buu and Janemba are generally pretty good as well. Kid Buu, I only would recommend him if you have him at high stars. 
right? A lower stars being an LF unit and all, he's going to be a lot more squishy in this game mode, and you really want a team that's going to take you all the way. That's not going to start strong and then fizzle out at the very end, because a lot of teams will do that. That's what you will see a lot in the leaderboard very, very early on. And so, and then on the backup, Demon King Piccolo, he's a, a fair choice. I honestly kind of like the Android 21 a little bit more than him for regen. But it really just depends on the tier, and it really depends on the stars. And then you have Metal Cooler, who's another really, really good unit, who I also enjoy a lot. He heals himself, and he even heals himself on strike cards, on blast cards, on the cards that he just uses in general, right? Another really, really good unit. All right, so the next team, we got the rank 53 player right here. It's LOE. So actually, I've been looking into this team a lot. And, you know, it's just, it, it's pretty, it's pretty absurd how often they're becoming more and more relevant as well. They usually put a bunch of LOE units in tier 1, and I think mostly because of the fact that LOE doesn't have a lot of units to begin with. But you have a lot of really, really strong options on here. You have a ton of support. We just talked about the Metal Cooler, this green one, and the red one. He basically has the same effect where he's able to heal, and he puts debuffs on the enemy team, which is very nice. This blue cooler right here, he provides a lot of support. A lot, a lot of support. Chilled. He's he's nothing too special, but again, he is an HP buffer. He has like one of the he has a really good HP um, a Z ability because it's like HP and something else. I believe it is. I'm not. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head. But either way, like I said, HP is really, really good for TOP. And then this Frieza has a full board cover change, like literally every single square that LF Frieza can cover change, right? Once any of your allies is below 30% HP. Um, this um, this movie Frieza, he's generally pretty good. He has a kind of like a, a, a decent kit, nothing no, nothing to write home about, right? But he's still, he's 14 stars, right? That Z ability alone is going to be worth bringing him in. This team, you do need a lot of stars, I'm not going to lie. You do need a lot of the Zenkais and stuff like that. Pretty much, I, I, I generally see the, the new LF Frieza on the LOE teams for TOP, but I suppose this this yellow one right here, the Zenkai one, can make a worthy replacement just because he's going to be inflated with the Zenkai stats and all. And then you have this yellow Frieza up here in the top right as well in the backup, who is definitely like one of my favorites because he does have that blue card generation. When he gets hit with the blast card, he activates his green card and he's able to pull a blue for like the, the next time he attacks, and that's generally pretty great. All right, so the last team I wanted to talk about is the uh, Pull Force. So once again, so last season, I don't know if you guys saw the leaderboards, but it was absolutely filled to the brim with just a Pull Force over and over. Like, that's all I saw. And I know a lot of people were excited because it is a free-to-play team. And, you know, towards the end of the season, I saw, like, none of these guys in the top 1,000. But I guarantee you, this is still a really, really good team. This is the team that I used last season, minus... Minus the LF Frieza. Instead of the LF Frieza, I actually ended up using the Ultra Vegeta, who's also a really, really good unit. And I went ahead and I was just basically, you know, like, it, it just... I, I died once. I died once, right? But I still was able to reach um, the top 2K. I was still in the top 2K very, very comfortably. And it's just, you know, it just goes to show that this is a free-to-play team. It's pretty easy to use. And it's just, they don't even have a healer. They don't even have a healer. They just have um, cover changes and stuff like that. So imagine if they did have a healer, they'd be really good. As of right now, this is the best free-to-play team that you can build. Minus the LF Freeze on this guy's, right? If you have Ultra Vegeta, then I guess it would 100% be free-to-play. But look at this guy. Does he even have every everyone fully 14 starred? So I feel like this guy's going to die out pretty quickly. He's at rank 19 right now. Um, like, no disrespect or anything, but I think those units are going to um, definitely get hit pretty hard. But if you do have him at 14 star, like I definitely 100% recommend it. If you do not have him at 14 star, I recommend them being like 9 star, 10 star at the very least, right? Just so you can get the, the most out of their stats and stuff like that. All right, so now that we got teams out of the way, the, the top five teams that I wanted to go ahead and go over for this season of TOP, now I'm going to show you guys what you can do if you guys don't have any of those teams. So first what you want to do is you want to make sure you have some tier 1 units, right? So this is what I like to do. When I'm looking at the TLP, the first thing that I do every single season is when I go into filter, I filter this by tier 1 units, right? And then I filter out the extremes too, right? Because we do have some good extremes, but for the most part, you're looking more for the sparkings, right? The sparkings generally are going to have two TOP abilities rather than one unless they're extreme Zenkais. So I filter it tier one sparkings and then I filter it by power level as well. So that's going to show me like the highest power level units on my in my box, right? And so immediately what are the first um in the first row right here, I have three androids. 
So right off the back, I already know Androids is going to be a good team for this season. And then we have Kamikolo right here. We have the cooler. Like, uh, Kamikolo fits really, really well on um, regeneration, especially if you have him at a higher Zenkai level. This guy could easily replace Kid Buu while also Zenkai buffing your um, Super Baby 2, right? And then this guy, we already saw that he is right there on LOE. He's one of the teams that we talked about. You can go ahead and just look down this list, and you can even see some good Saiyans on here. Like, I think this red Bardock right here is pretty good. Um, you can keep going down and just looking at whatever teams that you think are going to be really good, right? Or what, like the start of something at the very least. And once you see some of the, your units in here that you want to definitely use, then that's when you start looking into tier two and stuff like that, focusing on your tag. Like for me, for example, if I, if I was, if this was me, this is my thought process right here. Um, you're going to make sure like I, I'm going to immediately see androids. I'm going to want to run androids. So at that point, I'm going to go ahead and filter this by androids, right? I'm going to keep it on tier one and I'm going to go ahead and craft my team from there. So I'm going to be using 18, 16, 17, that cell probably, and then this Android 18 because she is the designated healer of the team, right? I know a lot of people like to use this 17 because he actually has a really good kit for T.O.P. Because he does have blue card generation as well. Blue card generation is one of the strongest abilities in the game uh, for T.O.P. specifically, right? But the thing is I only have him at three stars, so I kind of usually opt out of using him rather than using him instead but if that's not enough for me so once I have chosen a tag then I'll start looking into tier 2 then I'll start looking into tier 2 and being like hey you know what I want to bring this Android 21 in here because this Android 21 is actually really really good right and then you know I can actually look into bringing these other Android 21s in there as well and even this yellow cell because this yellow cell will get Zenkai buffed by my Zenkai Android 18 Right, so those are some things you have to consider as well. Another thing you have to consider is that do you have stars on these units, right? You have to make sure you have some good amount of stars because if you're just running a full squad of three star units, it's not going to work out well for you. And you have to make sure you have a decent color will as well. So make sure you're not just filling up on just all yellow units, all blue units. You don't want a mono team that's going to hurt you in the long run. You want to have it like a decent color will at the very least. All right, so now we are back and we have crafted my Android team. So this is what I got going on right here. This is the setup I'm basically using. And I'm going to, uh, I pretty much go over this on my strategies pretty much for my own team and stuff like that, right? So again, like I was saying, when we're going over the top teams and stuff like that, I usually like to have Android 16 right there in the diagonal of the red 18. So that way he, she can always come in or he can always come in and save her. But the formation definitely differs from time to time because I do like to have this Android 21 in the middle of everyone because that's how she likes to buffer her, her team, right? So that's something you have to consider is that you're making sure you're looking at your, um, your unique abilities and to make sure you're getting the full potential out of all these units kits and stuff like that. So you can see right here, you want her in the middle of the board because she's going to buff the block above her, below her, to the left and to the right of her as well as her own block itself, right? So that's how I have it right here set up. And then you're just going to have the straight unit to go ahead and get whatever buff that's left on the board and stuff like that. Or you can go ahead and do this, swap them out as necessary to go ahead and make sure you have the most optimal setup that you have. And then another thing is your equipment. Make sure you guys are getting these equips. I get this comment a lot. It's just like, where do you guys get the equipment? Well, I'm about to show you guys right now. And you guys got to make sure you guys do put equipment on. You can see right here that I don't have the best equips. There's a lot of E equips on everyone right here. And it's just, but it, they're still very, very important to have overall. All right, so you're going to want to go into the exchange shop right here, and then you're going to want to go into your rare metal shop. So I know a lot of you guys might not have a whole lot of rare metals, especially because this is like where you get all the Z power for the Ultra Goku. Eventually, you're going to be getting all your Z power for the Ultra Vegeta. So you guys might want to save off or hold off on using these. But if you guys do want to invest in TOP and upping your TOP game overall, then this is definitely something you want to invest in. This is where you get all the T.O.P. equips right here. Literally every single one. There's not a single T.O.P. equip in the game that you can't get from this shop right here. As of right now. As of this video. As of recording, right? At the very least. And then what I do think is the, the most important equip that you guys should have is this one right here. We already talked about health and how health is so important in T.O.P. And this one just increases your base health from 2 to 5%. So getting a good roll on this might be like the wave, definitely. And only has one slot. Only one slot, so you can't re-roll it. So this could t definitely take up a lot of your medals, right? A lot of them. So just definitely be wary of that. All right, so now that we have our team, we built our team and stuff like that, I'm going to tell you guys how to choose your fights. 
So basically, across the board, depending on what league you're on, um, you have three fists to five fists stages, right? Five fists are generally going to give you the most points. Four fists, I think, is just like right behind it. And then three fists, of course, is going to give you less points as well. I honestly don't think there's a too big of a gap between three fist and five fist. And I honestly, if you are low in health, I 100% recommend going for the three fist, going for the easier stage. That way you can heal up a little bit because after you win a fight, you actually do get a small amount of health back from for your units, right? But let's talk about picking the fights as optimally as you can. Right? So if we look at this, we go into challenge. This is a Saiyan's team. I don't think this team is that stacked. I think my team could easily take out this team right here, right? Now let's take a look at the four star one. This is an even better team, an easier team to go against because it, there's EX units on there. And for the most part, like I said, EX units usually only have one TOP unique ability unless they are Zenkai EX units. And so for the most part, they're going to be holding this team back. There's like no synergy here at all. You're going to easily mop up this team and they're probably not going to be doing a lot of damage. Okay, and then we have this third team all the way to the left. This team looks a little bit more annoying, right? This team definitely does look a little bit more annoying. This movie Frieza right here, he's going to be able to go ahead and he paralyzes you or he, he like hits you with the green card and he like disables all your movements and your like for one character, right? And then this Gogeta Blue, if you use a strike card on him, he basically nullifies it with his like own green card mechanic, right? And then I do believe that this Broly has um, a cover change as well. So look at that. That's already three annoying mechanics that you would have to get through with this team. So that's something you need to keep in mind. That's something that you'll learn over time as you get better at learning the kits of your opponent. But another thing you have to consider is your path. So say say I do want to go ahead and go for the hardest stage over here with the Saiyans because I think I could easily take out these Saiyans. There's two purples on there. There's two reds. I have a blue and I have a really strong yellow. And so I think I could easily take them out. But if then after that, I'm pigeonholed over here, right? And I'm forced to take the, both of these uh, three stage, um, three fifth stages, right? It's going to lower my points. And I, I, I know for a fact that I'm not going to necessarily need a heal after this five fifth stage, right? So these are going to be a little bit rough. Rather than if I went for this middle route and then I start heading over here, I'm going to definitely be able to get some more points, right? And so that's something that you have to consider as well. And so make sure you are choosing your like fights very, very optimally in terms of points and stuff like that. All right, now let's talk about some teams to be wary of. Now, this is only a three-fifth stage, but I've seen this team on some five-fifth stages, right? So this team, I typically, um, if you are going to choose this team, just be cautious. If you're going to go against it, if you're going to choose this fight, because this Gohan right here, this kid Gohan in the bottom right, or yes, in the bottom right, he gets a blue card every single time one of his allies die. So if you leave him for the last like unit, like if you choose him as to be the last one targeted, then he is going to get a blue card up to five times, and that's going to that's going to hurt. Like, that's going to hurt your team a lot. So make sure you guys are targeting him first. Um, the Super Saiyan Shallot, you don't really have to worry about too much. He doesn't get a blue card until he gets into the God form and stuff like that. But just watch out for that super, that Kid Gohan right there, the yellow Kid Gohan. Another team that I would say is very annoying is Androids because they have all those mechanics that I was just telling you guys about, right? Like this Cell has a cover change. This Android 16 has a cover change. This Super 17, he will eat blast cards. And then this Red, a Red Android 18 will heal up those diagonals so this team is very very annoying to go against too you're going to see a lot of androids on this field this is generally another team that i want to um tell you guys to be wary of as well is the movies team so for the most part this isn't a fully built up movies team like the movies teams that were on the board last season were a lot more difficult right because you had revival go on on there you had the new bojack and you had the purple bojack for this one um i would definitely say that the guy that you had to worry the most about is this purple bojack because on the second turn he gets a guaranteed blue card so i would definitely recommend sniping him first targeting him first with a strong yellow unit before you know doing anything else and right here, look, this is another movies team that, like I said, you have to be really wary of. So there's no revival Gohan on this one, but you have both of the Bojacks. And both of the Bojacks get their, their blue card basically on the second turn. The red Bojack gets his awakened arts on the second turn, so it's going to hurt even more. All right, another team that I want to talk about that this isn't really a good example right here, but this is a 5 fifth stage, is regeneration teams. I don't think there's a lot of regeneration teams on the field right here in this season that have a whole lot of boot tanks. So boot tanks 
Um, like I said before, when we were talking about regeneration in the top five teams, is that Bootanks gets a blue card guaranteed at the start of the fight on the first turn and he increases his key recovery so there's a high chance that he'll be attacking first and you know that's really bad especially if you're bringing a red unit onto the field if you have a bunch of greens and you have like no red unit then yeah be my guest go ahead and do it but sometimes you'll see regeneration with boot tanks and the ella piccolo so there's two opportunities there for your opponent to get blue cards off so in that case and scenario i would recommend if you can snipe boot tanks before he actually hits you which is kind of unlikely then do that and then go after that lf piccolo but for the most part i would say avoid going out on the boot tanks tiles overall okay so the next thing i want to talk about is key restore speed so the one of the main things that i like to do before entering a fight i do this literally every single fight in top and it look it, it's it sounds like a lot but it, it is worth it like this is how i'm able to go ahead and get into the top 6k every season i'm letting you guys know the tips and tricks and stuff like that right so i reset this filter and stuff like that um all that goods or actually i keep it on androids so I'm going to keep it on Androids, on my Androids team, right? I have all eight of my units right here filtered out. And instead of filtering by power level, I go ahead and I filter this by key restore speed. Because this determines your attack order. So you can see right here, it basically orders it from highest to lowest. So you can see my red Android 18 has the highest key restore speed. So theoretically, she should be attacking first. The cell should be attacking second. Super 17 third. The, my blue fourth so i have like it, it just basically goes in order like that and this can be altered this is not always true because some of these units have key restore um built into their top kits right so sometimes like say like just for an example like say this android 18 had like like she has low key restore speed right here right but what if she had it in her kit where she said she had a certain buff that like upgraded her or gave her an increased amount of key restore speed then she might be ahead of some of these units right here like she might be placed right here in between super 17 and blue 21 that is not the case android 18 zenkai actually has a really bad <laughs> key restore speed but that some of, you have to keep in mind some of these units do have key restore speed in their kits but for the most part this is a good rule of thumb to see what your attack order is looking like right so for the most part i kind of like to target a blue unit first um even though i'm starting off with the red attack and it's not going to do much to a blue unit i know two greens or three greens almost right are going to be attacking pretty much early on so i know i can go ahead and basically snipe that blue unit right from the jump okay so now let's talk about attack order so we talked about um pick your fights as optimally as you can and we talked about the key restore speed so let's put that together into actually choosing a fight so i'm gonna look at this one right here right I, this is the one that I want to do is the middle slot the four fifth stage It's not going to give me the most points, but I think it's going to be the easiest fight So we have it right here Well, we're not getting a bunch of uh, a bonuses right here, right? I, I like to look at the layout bonus first, so I'll go to switch out um, We'll see the it'll it'll pop up the layout bonus right here So I'm getting bl extra blast damage in this top slot right here, right? It says blast damage up super 17. He is a blast unit sometimes it'll swap from like it'll start off at strike or something like that you can just easily go ahead and click on the icon right there and then you can go ahead and swap that to, to blast that's usually what i do and so i'll go ahead and do that and I, i'll go back and forth like I'll, I'll legit go back and forth and check to see like you can see right here he has two yellow units and he has two purple units right so what i want to do is i want to get make sure i have my yellows in there and i want to make sure i have my red in there and that's exactly what i have right here right i have my yellow unit and i have a red unit but since he does have two purples instead of bringing all these greens i'm gonna go ahead and just opt in to do this right here instead of that cell i'll go ahead and bring in this yellow cell this goes back to making sure you have a good color wheel and stuff like that right so we'll go ahead and just do that right there and then now we do the attack order so looking at color counters and stuff like that as we already said when we when i go to switch out and i look at the key restore speed i could see my pretty much my general order of things right here right so i know that i have like th this order right here so it's like a red green blue is going to be attacking first for the most part right so i'll go ahead and do that first so maybe i'll attack a yellow unit first let me go ahead and attack rosie first and then I know my yellow units are pretty much at the end of my rotation. So let's go ahead and attack. Um, let's attack, attack Krillin. He's going to be pretty weak, right? And then I kind of just repeat that process right there. Um, maybe I'll go and instead of this time, I'll go for this guy. And then I'll go for this guy, right? Because I kind of, that's how I go in my head. So I assume that I'm gonna, my first three units are going to attack Rosie. And then my yellow units at the back end are going to attack Krillin. And then once again, my first three units, which does include a blue, 
those the Android 21 is going to attack this guy. And then I'll go ahead and attack um, again with my yellow units at the very end. And then I'll do this. And then I like to save Super 17 for the final um, unit because he does eat blast cards, right? He eats blast cards. So I usually like to deal with the annoying units last. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe you guys think otherwise that you should deal with the annoying units first. But let's go ahead and see. Our, oh, oh my God. Let's go ahead and see how it goes. We'll be right back. We'll go right into the match. Okay, so now we're into the match. We're just playing it at triple speed and stuff like that. So let's see how this goes. Okay. So you got all this stuff going on. Like everyone's using their green cards and stuff like that. Okay. And there's there's the first unit dead right there. And we still... So I know that Krillin's going to die, right? Like I said, at the, the very end of my rotation, I know that this, this guy's pretty much dead. And then I kind of just rinse and repeat, right? So now I'm going to be attacking the the red Goku. Look at how much damage that we're already doing to him. And just like that, nice and easy. And we're able to eat his blast card right there. And then this, look at it. So we did get the cover change right there. We got the cover change. And then now this purple unit is now dead as well. Okay, so now this is turn three. Everyone's pretty healthy here, right? So again, this guy's probably dead across the first three units. And then we're going to end it off right here. Or we probably won't end it off. It'll probably end next turn. But we did a good amount of damage, right? We don't have a purple unit on the field. So that's something to keep in mind. He's going to eat one of my cards, which is very annoying. That's okay. He's going to get this last hit off, which kind of does suck. But it's okay. We still got through that with pretty much everyone intact, right? No one took a, a hefty amount of damage and stuff like that. So and you see, I got 1 million points off of that. Because I was able to kill everyone. And you can see everyone is pretty much... Full HP, except for 17, I suppose. But that, that's pretty good. We got the full kill and stuff like that. That's something you want to, you definitely want to always aim for the full kill. If you know you're not going to get the full team kill, you should just go for a lower fist stage because you get a lot more points from getting the full team kill. All right, so another thing that I wanted to talk about, the last thing in terms of choosing fights is your win streak bonus. So if you guys don't know, you get a massive win streak bonus at every fifth win. Only uh, emphasis on win. It can't be every fifth battle. It's every fifth win. So we just did our first fight. And let's say like we go up to here. So this would be my second, my third, my fourth, and then my fifth would be right here, right? It would be this guy right here. Now, typically for the fifth fight, Regardless of how hard the fight is, I usually like to go for the highest difficulty stage because you get a multiplier. On the fifth win, you get an increased multiplier on that, that score for that fight, right? So you're going to get an inflated win streak bonus. And so you want to take advantage of that as much as you can. The fights prior to that, I honestly think you could do whatever you want. Like if you wanted to go ahead and just do three fifth stages for the first four fights and then just go ahead and do like do like come over here and do this three fifth stage do this three fifth stage do this three fifth stage and then go to the fifth the fifth or the fifth battle on the five fifth stage i still think you have like you'll still get a good amount of points that's generally how you want to go ahead and do it right I think that's very, very important to note. That's usually what I'll do sometimes. If I'll just do three fifth stages and four fifth stages, and then once I get to that fifth win, then or on the fifth battle, then I'll go for the highest difficulty stage. All right, so now let's talk about dying. So dying. So you can lose up to two times and still complete the board. So when you die, you don't exactly lose. Like if I were to go ahead and, um, oops, did not mean to do that. If I were to go ahead and lose a unit, that's like if like say like Cell died, or say like Android 18 died, that I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna lose, right? That's not going to ruin my win streak bonus, um, but it's going to eventually start slowing me down, right? But once like you lose a stage and it'll tell you that you lost the stage, it's going to push you back two tiles. So say like I was up here at this stage right here, this three fifth stage, it's going to push me all the way back down here. Or, yeah, so it's going to push me all the way. It's going to push you back twice, two times. as um, Or two tiles is what I meant to say. But as long as you only lose twice, you could still complete the board as long as you utilize all of your TP. This means none of your TP can go to waste. You have to make sure you're using it all. Every single time it refreshes, you don't let it bleed past the five limit mark, right? In the top hand corner right there. And so you make sure you're using all your TP. You can lose up to two times. And I honestly, I personally, I've heard other people's opinions, but I personally think dying is recommended over healing tiles. I know when you die, it does reset your win streak bonus, right? It does reset your win streak bonus. So you have to restart building up the five wins again. And so I know that some people recommend healing 
instead so you can go ahead and do that but i just feel like healing and going to these tiles these party formation tiles is just not worth it like at all like i feel like you just lose way too much points from that because at least when you die or when you lose you get sent back those two tiles so you can recover a little bit of those points like you can redo the same battles and still get some of those points back rather than when you go to one of these tiles or a healing tile then you just heal and you just keep moving on, right? So that's a bunch of points lost just right there. Maybe it does even out but with the win streak bonus. But honestly, when you die or when you lose and you come back, all your units come back with full HP. So I think that's definitely more worth it in my own opinion. All right, so that's going to go ahead and wrap it up for the definitive guide on T.O.P. Hopefully this did help. I know a lot of you guys in the comments were asking for a little bit more help. I did was able to go ahead and give you the, the five teams and stuff like that. And definitely, again, I said it in the beginning of the video, but check the, the timestamps in the description below to go ahead and find exactly what you are looking for. So that being said, if you guys enjoyed the content, definitely let me know by leaving a like, a comment, or maybe even considering that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.